It's been a while. Arnold Leisure, the parent company of Dreamworld, has announced they've done some refinancing with some of their properties overseas, and that means they now have about $80 million in cash to spend on their attractions, including Dreamworld. What do you do with $80 million? Well, it's fair to say that probably not all of that money is going to Dreamworld, but there's more than enough money there to build some really, really cool stuff. So I thought, Here's maybe six ideas I thought they should definitely run with in terms of new rides, new roller coasters. Fair to say in terms of roller coasters right now, the benchmark is set super high with DC Rivals Hyper Coaster at Warner Brothers Movie World. It is such a good ride and not just a good ride in terms of Australian rides, but one of the best roller coasters in the world. See, you don't have to be the tallest and the fastest and the whatever else to be the best roller coaster. In fact, it's kind of a, a thing of diminishing returns in, in the fact that if you have, let's say, $30 million to spend on a roller coaster and you spend it all getting up to some ridiculous new height, then there's not a lot of money left over to really do anything else. And so DC Rivals Hyper Coaster absolutely kills in the fact that what it does with the money that was given to build it, it it's just next level. It's absolutely phenomenal. Things like that non-inverting loop and that first drop are just absolutely insane. And that's kind of what I think Dreamworld needs. And whether or not you look at, say, Alton Towers with what happened with the Smiler, whether or not you look at what happened at Six Flags Great Adventure back in the 80s, and even places like Hong Kong Disneyland, which struggled to get profitable at all, really didn't turn the tide until they put a big giant roller coaster in. And there are countless other examples where putting in major capital expenditure totally turns the tide for the narrative at a theme park, which has had a bit of a troubled history. So that's where I think Dreamworld needs to go. But the thing is with roller coasters is they do take a long time to build. In fact, most roller coasters take minimum 12 to 18 months to go from planning to completion. So what do you do in the meantime? Number six, I think, is turning the giant drop into a sky jump. So what's a sky jump? So basically, there's a couple of different ones already installed around the world. The most known one is Falcon's Fury at Busch Gardens. And of course, this thing is insane. You basically go up like you would with a giant drop, you face the ground, and then you free fall and it swings right at the last second. It is awesome, so, so cool. And they can make a really quick win on building the tallest sky jump in the world and having an absolutely new and terrifying ride by retrofitting the giant drop to become a sky jump. This will also probably be a two punch kind of situation because I think as it stands, the Tower of Terror side of the Dream World Tower doesn't have many years left in it. So you kind of have this kind of one, two knockout kind of situation where in the process of taking out the Tower of Terror, you can justify it by saying you're getting a whole new ride in the process. Coming in at number five would have to be a replacement for the Wipeout. In terms of something you can quickly install while you're planning a roller coaster, that site is absolutely bright for a new thrill ride. Now, I'm a bit of a nostalgic guy, so I think replacing it with something that's same, same, different and better would be a great way to go. You get to keep the wave. In fact, companies like Zamperla have a wind shear. Hold on, it's a crap name. Let me, I'm gonna check it. Backflash suspended wind shear. There's an opportunity there to buy what Zamperla have right off the shelf, plonk it straight in the same spot. It's the same capacity. It's virtually everything almost identical to the Wipeout, but newer, faster, more intense, with no floor. You can add in new water and fire effects and all that sort of jazz to make a newer, better Wipeout. And I think you would tick the box for a lot of people in terms of adding in and respecting this nostalgia of Dreamworld. The secondary option to that, of course, can be something like, I think, Intamin Maker Tabillin. I don't know. They look really, really cool, don't get me wrong, and it's probably the most likely contender that'll probably end up going in there on the Wipeout spot. The thing is, as much as they are awesome to look at, they look, at best, kind of a bit vomity to ride. So they don't really get my vote there in terms of what the Wipeout did, which was basically the perfect flat ride. It wasn't too spin and spewy it kind of had a unique experience the water stuff was cool the wave was awesome so 
just buy the Zamperla thing, call it a day, you'll make a lot of people happy. Switching gears now, number four through to number one, it's all about roller coasters. Because here's the thing, fundamentally, if you wanna change the narrative of Dreamworld and follow in the steps of recovery like Warner Brothers Movie World did, I think you just have to build that big mother <laughs> roller coaster. And of course, when we talk about roller coasters, I think any roller coaster ideally is gonna start from Blue Lagoon and it's gonna run right up the side all the way to basically where Westfield is. And I think for a couple of reasons, one, because Arnold Leisure slash Dreamworld can't really do any development on that land. They can't sell the land, they can't do anything because of the creek there. So the best thing you could do is probably build a roller coaster on there. Plus, you get that same effect that DC Rivals Hypercoaster had, which is basically being a gigantic, awesome billboard. I mean, what better billboard is there than a big roller coaster? And so having that run up across the highway would be perfect. So here's the four options that I think are gonna be the best suited and why for Dreamworld changing that narrative and absolutely killing it in the thriller department. So number four, which is the least likely to happen, is a B&M flyer. Now, B&M are a designer of roller coasters. They are, they are probably not the most likely to build anything ever in Australia because they are pretty expensive. They are absolutely the Mercedes in terms of the price that you would pay and the, for something that would absolutely work perfectly with like very little downtime, very low maintenance, that price tag, I just don't know if you can do it. But they make a cool flying roller coaster that is like nothing else. I'm sure you're looking at it right now. These things are insane. And places like Six Flags Magic Mountain have put in ones. There's one there called Tatsu that are just absolutely ranked so highly amongst people who are into theme parks. I think that's a great option for something that's just gonna to be totally different. So coming in at number three is an Intamin Accelerator. There is some cool Intamin launched rides that are happening in China right now and across in Europe as well. They are so cool in terms of these multi-launch systems, these fake drops and reverses, and there's just cool stuff happening. Intamin have consistently led the march of innovating in terms of roller coasters and the technology that's used. It's Tower Terror, Giant Drop the Claw, Superman Escape, you name it. They've made awesome stuff in the last 10, 20 years. In fact, their whole portfolio is made of cool, innovative stuff. And the Intamin Accelerators are no different. I think personally that Dreamworld needs to have maybe a bit more of a traditional roller coaster style in terms of something that's going to fit in their portfolio of attractions. Because once when Tower Terror comes out and once when the Hot Wheels Sidewinder come out in the next 10, 15 years, there's gonna be a hole there in their lineup that's not gonna be filled by something that might be a bit novelty-ish. So for that reason, that's why it's number three. Number two is Vekoma. They've done some really cool stuff in the last couple of years. See, Vekoma, again, the company that built the Wipeout, they also built things like the Lethal Weapon slash Arkham Asylum now, and a bunch of other rides that aren't exactly known for being smooth, is probably the best way to put it. Kind of things that would give you a headache after you rode them. Suffice to say, it seems as though they've really changed gears in the last couple of years, and the stuff that they've been bringing out now is kind of awesome. They've got two models that are coming out, Shockwave and the Firestorm. I was right, Firestorm, I had to check. Um, that just look really crazy cool. So there's a model there that has a big launch section with a huge top hat that goes up as high, if not higher than DC Rivals Hypercoaster, and one that's a little bit less taller, but has all of these really cool, unique elements, like things that fly through the station and just cool, traditional roller coaster, modern twist, great airtime, great intensity. And this is the thing, with DC Rivals Hyper Coaster, as much of a great roller coaster as it is, it's one big disadvantage is that it has no inversions whatsoever. So it is a great opportunity for Dreamworld to build something that has inversions as a point of difference and a marketable advantage. That's why I think Vekoma absolutely is a great choice for number two. They can make some stuff that looks and runs awesome. And number one is pretty much anything from RMC. I swear to God, this company has been killing it the last couple of years. So RMC is short for Rocky Mountain Constructions, and they started off replacing wooden track on wooden roller coasters with steel topper track to make them smoother. And I think somewhere in that process they went, geez, wouldn't it be cool if we just kind of messed with the track a little bit and made it a little bit more intense here and changed that little bit there? And then they went, how cool would inversions be 
on a wooden roller coaster. And then they kind of just went a little bit mental and they have been making absolutely top tier roller coasters the world over ever since. And the cool thing they've done, which you know, won't apply to Dreamworld, but they've been taking old wooden roller coasters and just adding a lift hill on top of the lift hill and adding all these cool inversions on what was traditionally a kind of an old kind of boring roller coaster into something that was just next level. If you look at Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point, or if you look at Hakage, which I think it means white whale or blue whale or something like that, at Nagashima Spa Land in Japan that just opened, these were both traditionally kind of basic affair kind of wooden roller coasters, which are now just incredible roller coasters. Now, of course, you don't have to build it on top of an old roller coaster. You can just start from scratch and you can build basically a wooden structure with steel track on top and make a RMC hybrid roller coaster, which would absolutely kill. Because I think for most Australians, the last wooden roller coaster they rode was either that absolutely boring ride and I get, I get it's culturally significant, whatever else, but the one that's the scenic railway at Luna Park, Melbourne, or it was either the Bush Beast at Wonderland, Sydney. And of course that was 15 years ago and a lot of things have happened since then. And that's a great opportunity there again to market something that's totally unique, totally different and kicks ass in Australia. And one of these other projects that RMC have proposed recently is known as an RMC T-Rex. So they've built a smaller model of this idea called an RMC Raptor, which is a single beam, totally innovative and totally revolutionary type of roller coaster track that basically allows them to build something super intense in a very small, tight space. And of course, they've basically perfected this idea. They've built a couple of these smaller models and they've gone, we could probably do this up to like 70 meters or so. And that would be kind of perfect for Dream World because it would be cheap, they could make it massive and huge, and they could also incorporate all the inversions and all the other awesome stuff that would absolutely be a huge point of difference and as good if not better than DC Ruffles Hypercoaster. So there's number one. Either an RMC Hybrid or an RMC T-Rex would be absolutely killer. So that was my six things that they should and shouldn't do. What are your thoughts? You let me know in the comments, please, by all means. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And if you didn't, well, hit the like button anyway, that would be awesome. And be sure to subscribe and share this around. That would be super awesome. I look forward to making more videos like this, plus some other travel-y, vloggy stuff pretty soon. So thanks for watching.